Here are 11 things you may not know about Maria Ressa. Nobel Peace Prize laureate and Rappler CEO Maria Ressa is, in her own words, a die-hard Trekkie. In the book How to Stand Up to a Dictator, she writes, To this day, I point to the combination of Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk, rational logical analysis tempered by empathy, instinct, and emotions. In the early years after moving to the U.S., Maria, the only brown kid in class, got invited to a pajama party by the coolest kid in third grade. How did that play out? You'll have to find out from the book. Maria Ressa acted in theater, played in the orchestra, played basketball and softball, and served as a three-time class president. Maria Ressa was voted most likely to succeed in high school. The caption for her yearbook says, she plans to conquer the world. Who says yearbooks can't see into the future? Maria credits the public school system in Toms River in New Jersey as one of the pillars of her formative years. She says, It gave me free music lessons, computer programming classes, and advanced placement classes that allowed us to compete in Ivy League schools. Maria also credits Donald Spaulding, the head of the Toms River Regional School Summer Strings program, as quote-unquote, the one who helped make me who I am. Mr. Spaulding was not only my violin teacher and orchestra conductor, he would pick me up from the other side of town so that I could join actual gigs. These photos were taken during a memorial for Mr. Spaulding. Maria and her former schoolmates got together in 2019 to pay tribute to the man who gave them the gift of music. Maria writes, Mr. Spaulding helped me learn to play up to eight different instruments. He nurtured me and others like me, kids looking for our place in the world. Her favorite instruments are the violin, piano, and guitar. Maria graduated from Tom's River High School North in 1982. Warning, when you come back to your high school 40 years later and you meet your AP English teacher, she will quiz you. Mrs. Thornborough impacted almost all of us. And she gave me this little, this bracelet where she took a quote, though she be but little, she be fierce. She gave it to me and then, so Maria, which Shakespearean play is that from? Do you know? 40 years after, the school staff unveils a huge blue plaque over the main entrance of the newly renovated space Maria had once known so well, declaring it the Maria Ressa Auditorium. As Princeton and Nietzsche have taught me, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. She took up pre-med at Princeton University, where she graduated cum laude with a BA degree in English and certificates in theater and dance in 1986. In the same year, she returned to Manila on a Fulbright Fellowship and worked for the newly liberated government station PTV4 as head of its special projects team. In 1987, she became the director and producer of Probe, the first and longest-running investigative news magazine in the Philippines. Around the same time, she joined CNN and set up the CNN Manila Bureau, and later on, the Jakarta Bureau. She writes in the book, I made my career at CNN, creating and running two bureaus in Southeast Asia during the 1990s. She became CNN's leading terrorism expert with her work on the Bojinka plot in Manila, the precursor of the 9-11 attacks. In 1995, I spent weeks chasing a terrorist cell busted here in Manila. One man was arrested, perhaps the first commercial pilot recruited by a group we would later call Al-Qaeda. Her investigative journalism on terror networks are curated in her first book, Seeds of Terror. 
She joined ABS-CBN as the Senior Vice President for News and Current Affairs in 2004. In 2016, she co-wrote the seminal series Weaponizing the Internet with Rappler co-founder Chai Hofilenia. The series analyzed how the Duterte propaganda machine was weaponized to discredit journalists. What happens when the facts are debatable? And that's what's happened now with social media. Technology has actually changed our world fundamentally. Right now, press freedom is an illusion, and we are forced to test it with every story because there's a gun pointed at you. And if you step outside the lines, you get targeted. In 2022, UNESCO released a study by Dr. Julie Possetti and Nabila Shabir. It says the onslaught of online violence against Maria Ressa created an enabling environment for her persecution, prosecution, and conviction. The study also says threats were designed to undermine her dignity and erode trust in her journalism. Maria's lawyer Amal Clooney says in the foreword of the book, When you think of a superhero, you may not imagine a 5-foot 2-inch woman with a pen in her hand. They face daily threats to their reputation, their freedom, and, in some places, their life. And Maria Ressa is one of them. Oh wait, there's a 12th fact we almost forgot. She can skateboard. 